Okay, my friends, this is my most favoriteest, excellentest, bestest, wonderfulest thing that I have in my life is quantum. <laughs> that just shows you where I'm at. <laughs> I've been doing this my whole life, and finally, I got the evidence to support basically everything that I've been saying for 50 years or more. Now, and I will show you all my little doodles I did way back then, and I realized there was no way that the nucleus of an atom could be just one big gigantic positive and then a little tiny negative floating around on the outside. It, was, it, was, it didn't work. So I knew somehow the nucleus had to be a dipole, which means that it had both positive and negative. And then I ran into some light experiments that shows exactly how that happens and we're going to go through that and it, we're going to do it in a, in a orderly manner I hope. <laughs> I'm not a real orderly guy but my contention is before we get started we're going to, we're going to take a look at Sean Carroll and he's going to be talking about elementary particles and about the Higgs boson. And Higgs bosons, I, I will show, and my contention is that all light is, is a spinning dipole, it's back-to-back -back dipoles, and it spins and goes forward. The, it, from the side it looks like a wave, yes, but I can prove that it spins. I show this, no question whatsoever. And the spinning effect is the faster it spins, in other words, if it's going spinning that fast in that much of a distance, or spinning this fast, you know, in other words, the less spin it has, the less impact it has. If it's zzzz, bam, it hits something, it really whacks it because of that part of the spin. All right. When it's a long spin, it's sort of lazily bashing into something, but it's always push to shove, which is the explosive portion of this dipole, because one side is nothing, there's no impact whatsoever, and the other side impacts and pushes everything away from it. And everything else has a side that is exactly the same, so it pushes back. Everything is push to shove back. That's all that exists. Now, the nucleus is not made of one gigantic ball in the center, which is the, the, the positive. It's made of all electrons as well. And every electron is a dipole. It has a positive and a negative side. And they cling together and all of the dark side, positive side we would call them, clump to the center. This is what you will see if you had an atom in your hand. Well, you wouldn't see the black part. You would just see the white. You'd see a white ball. Because everything just radiates. So you, all, all you ever see is what radiates out. The black, is, it goes into the inside. But when we split them on the photon crusher, we actually could see these particles. Then we could see these particles. Then we could see those particles divide. And Because they, they, that's from light. So we're in the electron, photon, and then photon fission. We divided them. I'm going to show you that right now. All right, let's start with my first claim. This is red laser light, and there's a single slit venturi. Single slit, not two slits. No flapping waves to make these interference patterns. These interference patterns is because the light screws through here, and that's what it is right here. It screws this way, and it screws that way. Some goes this way, and some comes over this way. Some come, most of it goes through the center, that's why you have the most impact there. But all of these are interference patterns, not based on flapping waves. They're based on get away from me, you get away from me, you get away from you. They don't want any other particle next to them. So they end up setting up these little blobby sections to keep away from each other as they screw through this venturi. And that is the drill bit. They go to get an, a, a machinist. <laughs> All right, you just saw it spinning. Now, in addition to that, because that's really confined little spinning space, but in addition to that, the particle is right here, and it creates a wave as it plows through everything in front, so they start to glow a little bit too. But then when we put it to that venturi, then it's all changed, and then it's zzzz, 
and that's when you get that really spin and you get that a, a unbelievable impact. And then the particle actually separates. You say, ooh, Roger, what particle is that? And I say, well, it's this particle right here. And that particle only shows up like that ever, just prior to a concussing and then exploding, as I will show you. And as far as Higgs fields goes, yep, got them. Here they are right here. Coming out at us, there's a distance like this, which is this white spray. And then right here, they start to create the fields again. And there's these fields. And that's because these white particles, which is the electron showers, are now reconnecting with the black particles, which were attached just before they concussed. And then they separated. My interpretation of that is the black is the muon. The white is the electron neutrino. That's a muon neutrino, electron neutrino. When they concuss, the muon neutrino just stays a muon. The electron neutrino turns into electron showers. All right, this is the acceleration event. You don't even see these particles taking on any definition whatsoever until they just start to stack up. And here they are, and then they show in this box configuration, and then they explode at the Venturi, as I showed you. And that is the Venturi, forcing these particles to come in here. And all their fields are huge, absolutely huge. And they crush into these fields, squirt out the black particles out of there, out of there because they just have no impact value. All they have is an attraction value. They don't emit anything. They don't emit anything. They're just black. They don't emit. They don't absorb anything. It doesn't appear to me. They never change size. They look exactly the same from, you know, exactly what CERN's saying. So they don't seem to emit. They don't seem to absorb. They don't seem to concuss. They just seem to be so attractive that they somehow are restricted from allowing it to go through this. It's a, it's a pretty well tuned Venturi. So only certain size particles are allowed in here. And when they are, their fields become so crushed you get the electron showers. All right, you saw that they did divide, and they were attached before, and they are divided here. I, I don't see anybody can, can dispute that. 100% white, not a single taste of black in here. And the black is totally surrounds it, and then attaches immediately as it starts to decay right after the Venturi. Now, right above it, whoops, is exactly what they I just showed you. The muon and the uh, electron neutrino black and white balls together came in and then the muon stayed the black ball and the electron shower turned into the electron shower. Here's the black ball and electron shower. So this should be looked at a lot more carefully because I believe we've increased the energetic value of that particle 200 times. That's my that's my claim at this point or at least that's my guess. Let's go with that. Like I said, th this would have been the impact value prior to the, this extremely reactant to the Venturi. Then that now is the new impact value. Now, again, I'm just going to leave it at this. 1839 of these electrons make up one proton. You add one more electron, it becomes neutral, and it becomes a neutron. Now, you can take one or two or three or four away here, give or take, and then they become, you know, um, isotopes. So they're not really exactly that atom, but they're, you know, they, they, they have a little bit of a difference. They, they, they're going to, they're electrically a little bit different. So that's how they can account for having all of these different isotopes. And there's the isotopes, you won't believe how many isotopes there are. Unbelievable. And 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 they can only happen if you're adding one electron here and there in and out. And you can only have this all stuff this working because of dipoles. And it works very, very, very nicely. So until we look into this, there's not too much else to do here. So let's take a, I'm going to go through Sean Carroll's presentation and I am going to respond to his statements and we'll see who's, you know, making statements that make sense. All right, 1839 little bits and pieces make up one proton.
1840 makes it neutral. 1839 is still, it's positive. It wants to drag in one more particle. But at 1840, it's neutral. It says, no, nah, we're all good, we're good. Stay away. Just, you can bounce around here, but you're not coming in to attach. 839 says, okay, hold on to me. That's basically what polarity is. Okay, I, I, I've taken courses at virtually every university all around the world. You don't have to pay for them. This is quantum mechanics, and he's going to go over the wave particle duality. And I just showed you that it's a particle that creates a wave as it proceeds through the air because of its magnetic field. But here's what he's got to say about quantum mechanics. Now, there's only one minute here. So this is a very exciting day for me because today we're going to start quantum mechanics and that's all we'll do till the end of the term. Now I got bad news and good news. The bad news is that it's a subject that's kind of hard to follow intuitively and the good news is that nobody can follow it intuitively. Uh, Richard Feynman, one of the big uh, figures in physics used to say no one understands quantum mechanics. So in some sense the pressure is off for you guys because I don't get it and you don't get it and Feynman doesn't get it. The point is here's my goal. Right now I am the only one who doesn't understand quantum mechanics. In about seven days all of you will be unable to understand quantum mechanics. Then you can go back and spread your ignorance everywhere else. Uh, that's the only legacy a teacher can want. So. Well, this guy's the only honest one I'm finding. <laughs> but he's right. Nobody can understand it because it's just not right. Bohr was wrong, and then they had to build quantum based around a, a wrong premise. Now, maybe he was right. Maybe I'm wrong. But I, I, I can tell you what. What I have found supports everything that I said and have said for 50 years that the core is a dipole and now I figured out it's, it's all electrons and they just mass in certain masses that are forms of stability. Hydrogen is the smallest form of stability of, of these masses of electrons and it's approximately 1839, 1840 electrons and then it has influence as to one more that says I want to get in to get to that dark matter and the, the white ones say no you cannot come in here. You can stay one angstrom unit away and and you push to me I'll push to you and boom you're locked in that's what quantum really is